Morning, everyone. Oh, can you hear me? Let me know if you can hear me okay. Hello, Willow. Hello, Rowan. Hello. Give me a little, hi, Emily. Give me a little like or a yes, if you can hear me. Hi, Harry. I'll stand out. Morning, everyone. Hi, Paige. Hi, Erin. Hello to you all. Can you hear me? Let's see. Hello, hello. Lots of people joining. Hiya. Okay. Is it working now for you, Mrs. Sheehy? Loud and clear. <laughs> How are you all this morning? I hope everyone's well and had a nice weekend. What did you get up to? We had a lovely quiz last night organised by my very good friend Anna, um, which was really good fun, although difficult. Um, and we came second, <laughs> which was quite good, really, actually. Um, we also had a little bit of a saga last night, although we've sorted it out now. Well, the cat has sorted it out now. We had a mouse in the living room and it was scurrying around all under the sofas and everything. And it was, <laughs> we spent ages trying to catch it. Um, but they're very, very quick little things. It was only tiny. Um, and um, we put a little bit of cheese, cheese underneath just outside of the sofa for it and it um, grabbed this bit of cheese and just as I was going to sweep it up and put it outside it just dragged the cheese back under the sofa so yeah that was our excitement um, we also took the dog for a very long walk um, hello Oscar are you gonna come and say hello yeah oh let's see if Oscar wants to say hello Hello. Oscar says hello. <laughs> I get the feeling he's not particularly impressed with any of this, really. And he's already been on an hour's walk this morning. Um, so he's getting lots of exercise, aren't you, mate? What did Oscar do this weekend, you say? Um, what did he get up to? Um, well, we went for an hour and a half walk on Saturday and then on Sunday we took him for an hour walk as well into the park, although it rained and snowed. 
um, and he chased some squirrels and had a great time. But it was very quiet and there weren't a lot of other dogs to play with, were there? Okay, he's going to go off for a bit. He'll be back for his challenge later. Shall we get started? Then let's do a couple more hellos and then we'll get started. Hello, Finn and Rubin. Hello, Jacob. Hello, Jack and Amelia. Okay, super. Let's get started then. So today we've got um, some information about our poetry competition. We've got some poems to read from a couple of poets. We've got some sign language to learn. And um, that should be us, really. Um, so what should we start off with? Shall we start off with a couple of poems? And then we'll do some sign language, then we'll do a few more poems, and then I'll talk to you about the competition, okay? So, here are some poems. Now, today's poems that we've got are from a friend of the reading realm called Paul Jenkins, and he is actually doing at 5 p.m. every day, if you look at his um, page, um, his poetry page, um, he is actually doing um, some live poetry um, readings at five o'clock every day. So you can check him out. Um, and he's really, really good. He goes up and down the country performing in schools and he has his own radio show and all sorts. Um, so let's get some poems up for you. Um, and children always love the title of this um, poetry book because it is called can you see that it's called my bottom did a burp in class <laughs> oh no my bottom did a burp in class and what's really nice about it is that all the poems are written by Paul Jenkins but um, all the illustrations are done by his son Thomas Jenkins um, so they teamed up together and illustrated and wrote it together. That's really nice, something you could do at home maybe. You could get your parents to illustrate your poems for you. Um, so it will become clear, but all the poems this morning have an animal theme um, because that is linked to our poetry competition. So this one is by Paul Jenkins and it's called Dinosaurs. Again, it's really quite difficult to read because it's a bit of a tongue twister. I better put my glasses on if I can. Uh, uh, <laughs> oh dear. No, it's just not happening. It's because I've got this new headset thing um, that my husband got for me. It's a bit sort of Madonna-ish, isn't it? Um, but without being able to sing or dance. <laughs> okay, so this is called Dinosaurs and it's by Paul Jenkins. Dinosaurs, dino roars, dino stomps, dino chomps, dino runs for dino fun, dino lazies in the sun, dino smashes, dino crashes, dino eats, dino beats, dino munches, dino crunches, dino hangs around in bunches, dino dips, dino flips, dino bashes, dino dashes, dino chase, dino race, dino on my pencil case. Ah! <laughs> And that's dinosaurs from my bottom did a burp in class um, by Paul Jenkins. And there's another one that I really like about an animal that I'll read to you now as well, if I can find it. Here we go. Oh, here it is. So many fun illustrations in it as well by his son. Really clever. And there's a lovely poem about Shakespeare as well. Okay, so this one is called Terence. Okay, are you all ready for this one? It goes like this. Terence. Terence was a crocodile who was lost inside the zoo. He'd wandered from his swampland and he knew not what to do. So he hid behind an ice cream truck as he knew of where he was found that the kids would get the wrong idea and scream the whole place down. 
he whispered to an antelope, don't be frightened, I'm just lost. Can you help? said Terence nervously, and here was the repost. Help you? You must be kidding, said the antelope. Oh, Ted, if I come within two feet of you, I'm more than likely dead. <sighs> Fine, said Terence grumpily, as he'd heard this all before. Crockist views were rife in the zoo. Our Terry knew the score. So Terence had to have a think, come up with a brand new plan. The only way to get back to his swamp was pretend to be a man. He put on the ice cream uniform, which was no mean feat for a croc, then stood himself up on his strong hind legs in some rather fetching socks. Then Terence walked bravely among the crowd, trying quickly to find a map. He discovered he wasn't that lost after all, and he'd got into such a big flap. Left at the lion, straight past the bear, and in around the back of the hut, Terence was home in his sludgy brown swamp, and this time he kept the gate shut. <laughs> Great, poor old Terence, lost in the zoo. So, they are some poems from my bottom did a burp in class by Paul Jenkins. Um, and I just got the Kindle version of that, um, which is great. So are we ready for some sign language then this morning? Yes, are we ready? Are we ready? Also, I'm feeling particularly happy at the moment because last night, there was the iHeartRadio um, live music show um, where loads of singers and songwriters and celebrities did a song in their living room. And who should perform? None other than Mariah Carey, who sang Always Be My Baby um, rather brilliantly. And that has perked me up wonderfully this morning. So let's do some sign language then. I thought this morning we'd do some days of the week. So, these are actually quite easy if you know the alphabet. Um, so, obviously, Monday through to Sunday, really, really simple. Is everyone standing up? Mrs. Sheehy, are you standing up? Are you standing up? Are your adults standing up? Are you standing up? Are you ready? I hope you are. Okay. So, days of the week, really, really simple. Um, first day is obviously, however you look at it, um, Monday. So it's three fingers tapped twice, Monday. Everyone got that? Next day is obviously, you got it, Tuesday. So really simple, Tuesday. Some people, Tuesday, Tuesday. Okay, because that's a T. Um, in British Sign Language. So you've got Monday, Tuesday. Everyone got that? Wednesday. Okay, so you just interlace your fingers like that. So you've got Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Thursday is a little bit trickier. It's a T and an H. Thursday. Thursday. Can you do that? Right, let's go from the top. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Yeah. Okay, next one is Friday. So two fingers. Some people do Friday. Some people do Friday. Okay, this is the one that I was taught, Friday. Okay. So, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Saturday, like you're, I don't know, like you're having a cosy Saturday in Saturday, and Sunday is brilliant, Sunday, that's it, you just clap twice, okay, so shall we go through that from the top, okay, ready? Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, 
Sunday. Right, I'm going to call some out and let's see if who gets them the quickest. Is it you or the adult next to you or you or your brother or sister? Are we ready then? Okay, Tuesday. Thursday. Sunday. Monday. Wednesday. Saturday. Sunday. Tuesday. Wednesday. Friday. Monday. <sighs> One more. Wednesday. <laughs> well done. Give yourself a round of applause if you've got them. So you can practice those throughout the week. Okay. Yes. Washing your hands for a Saturday. Okay. So have you got those? So they're all quite simple to learn. And we'll add some other sign language throughout the week as well. Okay. So some more poems then. And then that will take us perfectly in time with our Reading Realm um, competition. So as you know, one of our pals, one of our chums, one of our buddies, Neil Zetta, who wrote Gorilla Ballerina, um, he emailed me and said he was really enjoying the show. Um, I think he was being honest anyway. He might have just been being nice. Um, he was really enjoying the show um, and he wondered if we might like to do a competition together. And I said, oh, yeah, that would be great. That's really interesting. And he said, well, I'll tell you what, I will send the winner of the competition a signed and dedicated brand new copy of his my new book, Gorilla Ballerina. And I said, oh, yes, please. The kids would absolutely love that. Um, and so I thought I'd read a couple of animal themed poems from Gorilla Ballerina, which is published by Troika Books. And um, then I'll get into the details of the competition with you. OK, sound good? Yeah. OK, so this one I particularly liked um, and it made me laugh quite a lot. It's called Hide and Hippo. Are you ready? You can't hide a hippo in a custard pie. You can't hide a hippo in a cloudless sky. You can't hide a hippo in a pot of glue. You can't hide a hippo in a training shoe. You can't hide a hippo in a garden hedge. You can't hide a hippo on a window ledge. You can't hide a hippo if you paint it green. You can't hide a hippo on a submarine. You can't hide a hippo in a pile of peas. You can't hide a hippo on a hide for peas. Because hippos are huge, not skinny and sleek. So totally rubbish at home hide and seek. <laughs> I love that repetition of you can't hide a hippo and it would be so easy to do with another animal. You can't hide a tiger in a, you can't hide a tiger in a. So lovely poem there, you can't hide a hippo in a custard pie. What else can you hide a hippo in? I wonder. You can't hide a hippo in a, you can't hide a hippo in a, you can't hide a hippo in a, uh, uh, uh. yeah lots of things what can't hide a hippo in a pot no you can't hide a hippo in a da, da, da. any ideas you can't hide a hippo <laughs> hello paul jenkins we've just finished reading some of your poems we read about terence the crocodile you can't hide a hippo on a trampoline. You can't hide a hippo in a bright blue sky. Oh, good ideas, everyone. So the other one that I really liked in this, there are lots of ones that I really like, is Kangaroo Can. And it's thinking about things a kangaroo can't do. This poor kangaroo, I feel very sorry for it. If you're wondering, kangaroo in sign language is kangaroo. So you put your fingers together like that and he bounced kangaroo three times kangaroo. Yeah. So this one from Neil Zetter 
is called Kangaroo Can. My kangaroo can't bounce. My kangaroo can't hop. He strains to elevate himself, admits defeat and stops. My kangaroo can't leap. My kangaroo can't bound. I coach, coax and encourage him, yet he sticks to the ground. My kangaroo can't vault. My kangaroo can't jump. I fit his stabilizers, but he falls flat with a bump. My kangaroo can't bob. My kangaroo can't skip. He'll utterly refuse to use his brand new pogo stick. So we go for a walk or for a gentle trot. If people stare, then we don't care. My kangaroo still rocks. <laughs> Love that. You could think about other things that a kangaroo can't do as well. So let's have a look then at our poetry competition. Oh, would you excuse me for one minute while I go and get some kitchen roll to rub off the board? I'll sing to you while you're waiting. You'll always be my baby and we'll linger on. Time can raise a feeling this strong. Oh, what do you do with be my baby? There we go. Right. So. As I said earlier, our competition from Neil Zetter is to write an animal themed poem. However, there are a few rules that Neil has set us. OK, rule number one. Imaginary. He said it's got to be an imaginary animal. So an animal that you make up. So it could be a combination of two animals, like a bear elephant, like a, a bear with an elephant, or it could be a combination, or it could be a mythical creature. So it could be um, a phoenix or griffin or something like that. Um, or you could like put together two or three animals and make what we call a hybrid um, animal. So it needs to be imaginary. Rule number two, it can rhyme or not rhyme. Neil does not mind, okay? Number three, it's got to be your poem, okay? You can't take a poem from here and just change some of the words. It's got to be your poem. It also can't be your mum and dad's poem, okay? You've got to say mum, dad, nan, granddad, whoever's looking after you, you can't help me with this one, okay? You can't do it for me, okay? So next rule that Neil set, it has to be between 10 and 20 lines long. So we do not want a poem that's 3,000 pages long. Um, were there any other rules? Um, I don't think so. Um, it can be any format you want. I'm going to go over in a minute some different types of poems, but it can be an acrostic poem, a rhyming poem, um, it can be a haiku if you've done haikus. It can be a kenning. A kenning would be quite a good poem to do for an animal. Um, look it up if you're not sure what a kenning is. Um, the other thing is that you need to have your entries emailed to me. I'm not judging it though. I'm going to send them all to Neil. Um, by 6 p.m. this Thursday. OK, and you can email Ian at the reading realm. Oh, am I going to fit it in? .co.uk. OK, so you need to email them to me. So you can either send a picture of your poem or you can scan it and send it through. However you want to do it, that's fine. But um, you need to email it to me. Are there any questions about those rules? OK, so it needs to be an imaginary animal, one that you've made up. Um, it can rhyme, doesn't have to rhyme. We don't mind. It's got to be yours completely. OK, parents, we can't have any entries from you. I'm afraid it's just for the kids. Um, 
it's got to be between 10 and 20 lines um, and the deadline is 6 p.m. this Thursday okay and you email it to me um, the other thing although it's not a rule um, it would be great if you illustrated it and perhaps had a picture as well of your imaginary animal so you could do a really nice border you have some pictures and things that would be lovely um, okay we're not judging your handwriting we're not judging your spelling okay we're judging your um, original poem and ideas okay so don't worry if you're thinking oh no my handwriting's a bit scruffy or anything like that okay that's fine okay so I'm going to show you um, some ideas for some different types of poems that you can do okay if I can find my pens where are they where are they what have I done with them oh <laughs> It's not going well this morning, is it, gang? Oh, well, never mind. Oh, right, they're right here. <laughs> now, where's that white bit of paper? Oh, here it is. <sighs> Goodness, can you imagine being in one of my classrooms, honestly? <laughs> oh, dear. Right, don't worry if you haven't got all of those rules down. I've typed up a pack, and it's already online. Um, so it says poetry competition. There are all the rules, and I've done for you a pack that will help you so there's a pack where you can write um, your poem out um, and you can draw a picture of your animal and things like that now there are lots of different types of structures you can use when you're writing poetry I'm just going to give you a couple okay so the first one that you can use if anyone's ever seen this book called The Lost Words by Robert McFarlane and Jackie Morris. It's a really beautiful book. Um, and the idea of, of it is to conjure up all the words that we're forgetting. So all those words from nature that we are forgetting. But lots of it are about animals that we're forgetting. And um, they very often um, use what's called an acrostic poem. Um, I'm just going to find one for you and show you it very quickly. Um, so this one is about a heron, but you can see, hopefully down the edges here, H-E-R-O-N. Okay. So, for example, if I was going to do, let's say, um, an imaginary creature... Um, let's say, a, I'm just making this up now, a tiger, so it's a kangaroo and a tiger, okay, what I would do down the side, this is an acrostic poem, like so, so, oh, this was, right, Kyger, kicking, kicking joyfully the Kyger leaps into the sky blue the sky, oh, I shouldn't have done sky blue, but never mind, we'll just go with it. Kicking joyfully, the tiger leaps into the sky blue air, the sky blue vastness, the sky blue realms. Let's use realms. The sky blue realms of freedom. I um incredibly bouncy but also stealthy because it's a tiger stealthy incredibly bouncy but also stealthy and quiet a creature of myth 
and legend or something like that. Okay, so can anyone think for something for G for my Kaiga? G, it could be gorges. What does it eat? So it could be gorges on, let's think about what a kangaroo tiger hybrid might eat. Gorges on unsuspecting rodents and something else. Okay. So that's generally the idea. That's called an acrostic poem. Um, and what they do really cleverly in the Lost Words, they also add some movement in brackets. So um, let's just, where's that bit of paper? Oh, I don't know. I don't know. Where's it gone? Oh, here it is. Um, they might have in brackets something like, Creep, creep, um, Kyger's coming. And you could have it there, creep, creep, Kyger's coming. It just adds a bit of rhythm to it as well. Okay, so that's one idea that you can have, um, an acrostic poem. Um, let's keep with the Kyger for the next one. The next type of poem that you can do, um, I taught this to year two the other year when I worked um, in year two. Um, this is called a diamond poem um, and you'll understand why. So at the top of the poem, I'm going to put the name of the creature. Now, Kaiga has got two syllables. So my next line has got to have three syllables okay so i might write about something um striped i'm gonna have striped monster okay striped monster that's three syllables so my next one is going to have four syllables yeah so I might have something now, Kyger, striped monster, creeping or bouncing, bouncing stealthily. No, I can't have that because that's five. Bouncing, bouncing through leaves, through grass. Yeah, let's have that then. Bouncing, yours are gonna be much better than mine through grass and then my next line here is going to have five syllables okay so i might have something about what it's doing as it creeps through the grass or bounces through the grass okay um stalking its poor prey there we go stalking it's poor prey. Now, because I want that diamond shape, my next line is going to have four syllables. Okay, got that? Kaiga, striped monster, bouncing through grass, stalking its poor prey. Now I want four syllables. I might have quiet, quiet now. Quiet, quiet now, shush. Oh, let's have that. Quiet, quiet now, shh. Okay. Quiet now. Shh. Like it's, I'm trying to tell a story with it. It's sort of hopping up. Quiet now, shush. Hopping. Or I want something like deadly. Deadly King, like King of the Jungle or something. Deadly King. Let's go for that. It could be a queen. Deadly King. 
So that's three. So now you've guessed it. I want two. And then I'm, I think I might just stop at two, actually. Deadly King, watch out. There we go. Okay, so that is what we call a diamond poem. Okay. Obviously, if your animal only has um, one syllable in it, so, um, so a got to be 10 to 20 lines in so a bigger diamond yeah definitely so you could go all the way up to one two three four five six seven so you could add some more lines in here so go up to six and then seven so make sure neil's just reminded us it's got to be 10 to 20 lines okay so you could have a much you could extend your diamond out and have another line here and another line here okay but it's a good way to make sure um, you get in all your lines and things, okay? Yeah, have to do a six syllable line, yeah? Okay, so that's just some ideas that you could use for your poems. You might have a completely different idea of how you want to set out your poem. You could do um, a shape poem, so there's a really good poetry book called um, An A to Z of Animals by um, Liz Brownlee, Sue Hardy Dawson and Roger Stevens, I believe. And they do shape poems. So you might have your poem might be in the shape of whatever shape your um, creature. I kind of need to be careful here. Um, yeah. Um, in whatever shape your um, creature might be, okay? So you could have all the words in here, okay? So you might have a shape poem, acrostic, rhyming, not rhyming, all of those sorts of things, okay? Are there any questions about the competition? So it's got to be between 10 to 20 lines, an imaginary animal, if you go on the Reading Realm website, I'll show you now very quickly before we finish. Um, so I'm just going to type in the readingrealm.co.uk. Okay, and this will come up. It says the Reading Realm Poetry Competition. So I click on that. Yep. Looks like that. Let's try and get it a wave. Let's do it that way. There you go. See that? And then just scroll down and it's got all the rules and information there. And then what we've done is put together a little pack for you of information. And then there's a space where you can draw a picture of your animal. And then there's some paper there that you can print off. OK, you just need to put your name and your age. If you win, I'll email you and let you know, and then I'll ask for your address, okay? Um, so kids, you can get your parents to email it in. Um, that's fine. Were there any other questions? Yep, so name and age. Um, name, age, email it to me by 6 p.m ian at the reading realm.co.uk okay and neil's going to be judging it and then he'll send a signed and dedicated copy of the book to you okay so when does it end it um so the deadline is 6 p.m this thursday you need to email them to me by then okay you don't have to use the pack or paper that we've provided. You might want to send, set it out in a completely different way. Okay, so just scan it over or send a picture of it over to me and then I'll send them all um, to Neil. Okay, um, who's going to have a go at that? I hope lots of you are. Let me know if you're going to have a go. So today we looked at some poems by Paul Jenkins. We looked at one about dinosaurs, and we looked at one about um, Terence the Crocodile. 
from his book, My Bottom Did a Burp in Class. And then we learned some sign language for the days of the week, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Then we listened to some poems from Neil Zetter, and then we looked at the competition and some ideas that you can use. Hopefully everyone understands what we need to do. Um, it would be brilliant to have your poems in, um, please do. Um, there are lots of animal poems um, and just generally lots of poems in the reading rail map. If you go to the poetry section, there's lots of poems in there. And there's actually a really good one um, called Gustav Klunk, which is by Judy Douglas. Um, and that is actually about a made up um, creature. Um, and she's also written one about a phoenix as well, um, which is in the Reading Realm app. Um, if you have downloaded the app, um, please leave it a little review, a nice one if possible, um, and share this video um, and let everyone know about the Reading Realm. Um, thanks very much for spending your Monday morning with me. I hope that's given you some activities to do. Oh. Oscar's challenge. Has he got a challenge? Where is he? Oscar? Oscar? Oh. He's gone. Um, Oscar's challenge, as it is very cold and horrible outside, is to wrap up in a blanket or a duvet um, and read a book, either to your pet or to a teddy bear. OK, so when I'm reading, he often puts his head on my lap and just watches me. Um, so you can wrap yourself up in a blanket or a duvet or something nice and warm and snuggly and either read to your pet. Um, hamsters particularly like being read to, as do fish. Um, and um, yeah. That's his challenge. Thanks very much for joining us today. Thank you um, to Neil Zett for the competition and to Paul Jenkins for letting us read some of their poems as well. Um, have a lovely day. Um, share this video, tag people in it. Um, have a great one. Take care, everyone. Bye.